It was Wednesday about 6.15 p.m. We were just doing our normal thing, having a, sharing a beer together. And My staff members ran inside and said that uh, Jeff was having a seizure. His arms went forward, he locked up, was biting his tongue, and, I re and he was in the, literally in the middle of a sentence. I realized he was in trouble. I would say time probably was standing still. You're kind of in a daze, not knowing what to do, and just still kind of seeing everything going on. Jen, the manager, jumped down there. I hit him as hard as I could right here in the jaw to get his jaw to release. Put my ear down to his mouth. There was like no breathing. Put my hand onto his chest. Um, There's no movement in his chest as well. And then I realized he wasn't breathing. He had a heart attack. It happened literally in the middle of a sentence on a normal Wednesday evening without any indication. As soon as everything happened, it was sort of as if like somebody else took over my body and was just like, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do to stay calm. Um, and it just was weird how it just flashed back from years from doing CPR to I know what I'm doing. <laughs> she started CPR and we kept him going until the, the ambulance got there. Over half of the individuals that experience a sudden cardiac arrest or a sudden cardiac death event never have a cardiovascular symptom beforehand. And so educating the public on uh, responding to those individuals when they have an event like Jeff had uh, is critically important because that's really the only chance that they have. We'd get his heart started, and of course the condition he had, it wouldn't keep itself going. So he'd turn back the color purple and he'd stop breathing again. I remember literally trying to force thoughts out of my mind that Jeff just died in my arms. Shelly, Jeffrey's fiance, called me and said, we're taking, Jeffrey to, we're taking Jeff to the hospital. And I said, what hospital? What for? And so she said, you need to get to TMH and your brother's being taken to the hospital. I remember pretty much all of it, seeing his face, the way he looked when he was on the ground and everything. My older brother, I mean, he's strong as an ox. Looking up to him my whole life, to see, to see him reduced to, you know, twitching and shaking on an ER gurney, it was devastating. I did never get that image out of my mind. They asked for his uh, next of kin, is he an uh, organ donor, does he have a living will, etc. And that, that probably was the most frightening, because that's what they felt was going to happen. As we're getting set up to kind of induce a coma in him, he all of a sudden started moving. And to me, that was just an awesome sight because that tells me that actually his brain is working and he's got a pretty good chance. I felt scared. Um, I wanted to go in and hold him. And I don't care how old you are with your child, you always want to hold him. For me, you know, dropping dead's the easy part. For those that were left behind or could have been left behind, that's where it's really difficult and still very hard for them. They didn't know the extent if he had any brain damage or anything like that, so you're wondering, is he gonna be okay? Is he gonna be normal? I had no idea why I was where I was at. I gathered that I was in the hospital, something like that had happened, but why, for what reason, no clue. I asked him if he knew who I was, and he did. So, so we stayed the night and uh, prayed the whole time. If you look at where I could have been anywhere else at that given moment in the day, working late, heading home, in the car, you name it, probably dead. I'm a healthcare professional. I teach CPR, and I never used it in real life. Learn CPR and then do it on the dummy. I never thought I would have to ever use it. My impression was if I ever need this, it's going it, to it's gonna come in handy, but I hope I don't. And it could be a stranger, you know, in New York City. It could be your fiance, spouse, or it could be your mom or dad at Thanksgiving, you, you really don't know. And that's why that training is so important. You never know when it's your time to save somebody's life. I and mean, that's what it boils down to with CPR. In the case of sudden cardiac arrest, the immediate response by bystanders is the most critical component. For it to happen at Miller's Ale House and have somebody there that really knew what to do, even more so than myself, uh, was an amazing gift for Jeff. Guardian angel, miracle, whatever you want to call it. It was a miracle someone wasn't taken off this earth because someone read a book somewhere or someone took a class somewhere on CPR um, and made them stay on this planet. Life is so precious and it could have just been, you know, living the rest of my life without my older brother. 
and that, ugh. Without all the work that they have done, that educated all of the doctors, all of my friends that were surrounding me, the initial responders, without them understanding and knowing how to respond, I wouldn't be here. I would be dead.